Have you ever watched a painting demo by an artist that you admire and maybe the next day you felt so inspired and so eager to try those new techniques? The master artist demonstrations just looked so effortless, so simple and straightforward, so quickly rendered and you thought, I can do this. So filled with confidence, the memory and techniques you learned from that unforgettable demo are still buzzing in your mind. You set out to paint something using this brand new arsenal of tools that you've just acquired and you utterly fail. This happens to me a lot. I recently watched a demo by Andy Evanson. He's a renowned landscape and plein air watercolor artist whose simple approach to composition is something I'm constantly trying to emulate. This demo was generously done for the Niagara Frontier Watercolor Society. I'll link to that video in the description. Before he even starts, Andy does a mid-tone value study. This is in order to establish the dark values and connect the shapes to create an interesting composition that flows in a pleasing way. Like so many great painters I know, he says it again and again, whenever possible, connect your shadow shapes. He also uses a sponge to wet both sides of the paper before doing a light wash over the entire painting, just avoiding the brightest whites on the front side in that initial wash. His paper stays wet for a really long time, which is not something I've ever experienced living in a very dry climate, but these were two of the main takeaways I wanted to attempt when the weather this past weekend was finally warm and sunny and perfect for plein air painting. In addition to creating an interesting composition based on a simple continuous shadow shape and wetting both sides of the paper, I also wanted to get more comfortable using rough pressed paper since this is Andy's preferred paper texture. I set up my N Plein Air Pro easel and did a quick pencil sketch. I also snapped a photo using my iPhone and desaturated it to help me see the values a little bit better as I did the sketch so that I could focus on establishing the shadow shapes first and foremost. I did not have time to do a mid-tone value study so this served as a useful substitute. Now in hindsight, I was biting off more than I could chew. So many things went wrong. First of all, the quarter sheet of paper I grabbed for this project was way too thick, 400 pounds I think, and it was the largest size I had ever attempted for a plein air painting. Normally I work really small because let's face it, that's easier. <laughs> when I wet the back and front with a sponge, it didn't soak through the paper very well due to the paper being too thick and the fact that there was sunlight and a dry steady breeze hitting my paper the whole time. I was able to block in the sky color fairly quickly, but I was just not fast enough mixing up my greens for the trees. I had to re-wet the sky and tree area, which ended up causing my blue sky and the green tree color to bleed together instead of creating that nice soft look of two pure colors painted side by side on the wet surface. So that was a little bit frustrating. The changing light on my paper made it difficult to get dark enough with my midtones and shadows. I also had a hard time finding those connections between shadow shapes that Andy seems to portray so effortlessly. And because I was working so large and getting bogged down with details and colors, of course the sun was shifting overhead and by the time I reached the last step, which was to add the wet and dry shadow shapes, they were completely different shapes from the sketch I had initially done. On top of all of this, I was in a bit of a hurry because I needed to pick up my kids early from school and get them to a dentist appointment. Whenever you have a time constraint, that just causes even more low-level stress and just adds to that frantic feeling of trying to accomplish the impossible. So how do we avoid getting overwhelmed by the multitude of techniques we want to adopt in our paintings? How can we incorporate them more naturally and smoothly into our painting practice? Well, for one, I would not suggest trying multiple new things all at once in the same painting like I did. And for two, I would suggest trying these new techniques on something smaller and in the more controlled environment of your home studio rather than packing up all your gear to practice in the wild and unpredictable outdoors. <laughs> I made all the mistakes here. It's easy to get discouraged when you try your darndest to create an amazing painting, use your good paper and everything everything and then it fails to meet your expectations. But just remember that even the best painters in the world, the ones who fearlessly practice every single day, still have a high percentage of failed paintings. We need to flip our mindset concerning failed paintings and consider it this way. It's because of all those failed paintings that the best artists in the world have achieved that special status. To quote Henry Ford, Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. I will link out to that awesome demo by Andy Evanson. Be sure to check it out. He's an incredible teacher and painter. And while you're hanging out here on my channel, be sure to subscribe and you can watch this video next. I'll see you over there.